simple way to check run out in this case on a drive shaft scissor jack c-clamp metal ruler a rounded edge that's important a dial indicator is a armature that gets fixed to a chassis or something close by and then it has a gauge with a needle and it measures deflection well this is also a fixed reference point and it's going to provide a gap which uh, it's almost touching see that gap as I rotate the tire with my foot it's important not to grab the drive shaft hear that it drags there's a high point I have it marked as it comes back around see a low point coming up there's the gap it kisses it moves further away at the high point and it drags again and goes around you can hear it good that time so there's the high point so this gap right here is measurable with a feeler gauge. Okay. It's measurable with a feeler gauge. There's a set of simple feeler gauges that they have at every auto parts store. I think they should sell dial indicators at the auto parts stores, but none of them have them. You have to order it online which I'm sure I will. I'd love to have one, but this is extremely accurate. This is not a caveman method. This is spot on. And so we go ahead and we try it. We get that in there without it moving. See, 25 thousandths is able to pass through. And that's as high as my gauge will go. It looks like I have maybe one or two thousandths more. I don't think I have 30, but I have somewhere between 25 and 30. So, yeah, you can see it really good right there. That is a lot for a drive shaft. That's more than I would like to see. When this is put on a, a state-of-the-art machine and the guy is building this, it should be heat straightened. They should straighten that out. They should get it down to less than five thousandths. Because that means it's a heavy, it's gonna be a heavy spot. And uh well let's let's see. If we go so that's a that's a low spot that's a heavy spot so when we get to the high and sure enough where did they put the weights both of them on the high so that that irritates me. And this is just at the rear of the shaft. Uh, you also want to measure the middle and then do the same thing up front. Middle of the drive shaft. Different spot. Same number. 25 thousandths. Well, the other one had a little more than that. This is spot on. This one's 25, right on the money. The other one was in excess. 
by 25. And that's right at the upper limit of what a lot of manufacturers will specify that's tolerable. This is sloppy craftsmanship. See? I'll spin it. Low spot, high spot. Low spot, high spot. There you go. There's your drag on the low. Let's see. Exactly, there's the high. Same reference point as the rear, you know. Up front, same thing. Yeah, it's either the shaft wasn't straightened or at this point I'm thinking since the whole entire shaft is out of whack, we're not just talking about one one spot here or there. We're talking about the whole thing that's moving elliptically. So when these universals were pressed in, uh, they might not be lined up with one another. Uh, as, as far as, they might not be centered picture if you would be able to grab a hold of this shaft okay if you grab a hold of it and you could push the whole thing at both ends you move it over to the one side or the other that would make the whole entire thing spin elliptically well when with the universals with those when they're pressed in if they're off by just a little bit, that can cause that. Whatever the case, it's unacceptable. And you also want to check your transmission mounts. <clears throat> Mine are nice. Very tight. There's also... This has to have a little bit of movement. And that's measured in thousandths of an inch. Yes, mine, it, it has hardly any. It has, it has to have, it's, it's not a perfect, tight, welded fit, obviously, where the splines slip in there. There's a little bit of give. But that right there... See if I move it up and down, it goes click, 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 click. That is a good spot to induce vibrations in the vehicle. And that's how you're going to feel it if you got stiff U joints. Every slip yoke is going to have play. If you have U joints that are, are jammed and they're vibrating, that's, that's one of the places where it's going to transmit through because the shaft is going to resist rotation and it's going to lift with each rotation you may think that the u-joints only flex when it goes over a bump but that's not the case The diff and the trans are at different heights from one another. And there is a little bit of movement in these joints, even at ride height. With just one tire jacked up about a half an inch off the ground to facilitate movement in neutral. I can see it, I'm sitting here watching it. movement this, this whole shaft 
is at an upward angle, it's at an incline. The diff is down, oh, probably two inches, three inches below. Well, I couldn't tell you. I'm just making that up. But it's obviously at an incline. There are different heights. These U joints are always in operation. This is how you measure run out on the pinion flange. Oh, I'm trying to show here that there's barely any gap. I got it so close to touching. It's, it's right at three thousandths right now with the feeler gauge. It's at three, which you still can see daylight through a crack at one or two thousandths. I might bring it closer than this, but uh, I mean, this is this is a fine reference point to show you. The gap doesn't get any bigger or smaller as you rotate this around. Each one of these bolt holes that has the shiny spot is where the um, the bracket, the, the rear yoke flange assembly attaches. The other spots in between that look rough, that's, you know, pitting from rust, but this has all been addressed. This has all been smoothed out. Um, those bumpiness, those are low spots. They're not high spots, so they're not going to affect anything when it's bolted on. These shiny spots here, for the most part, those were still, those were flat before I put all this anti-seize on here. That's a little bit of sanding marks from sandpaper and file marks. Just getting it laser straight. But that's, uh, you know, that's consistent. With, with what I've had all along. It's it's less than a thousandth. If I go and move this closer. Okay, now I've moved it closer. It's at less than a thousandth. We're talking, it's right up on it. And spin this around all I want. It's not going to drag. Oh, what was that? Oh, there's one. Ooh. Oh, we're getting it to kiss a little bit. So we got half of a thousandth, maybe. <laughs> it's, it's so great. So the drive shaft is the problem, it's not my pinion flange. There's one more check for this that you can do. This is the final way that you can check for run out on the pinion flange. Now I'm up stabilizing this. See how it's right there on the bottom of that circle? I got it to where it's almost touching. It's again about a half of a thousandth. It rubs right there. And now it's not rubbing. And now it rubs again right there. And about a half of a thousandth. Uh, if I wipe off some of this anti seize and then uh, I, I look at it and I try to put a feel gauge in there. It's it's less less than a thousandth. You can't even see daylight through it. So that's spot on. Great happy diff. This is one of the things you should do 
to make sure that you have a fully functional drive line.